Welcome back to the City Current Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, empowering the good, and in this case, talking about a documentary. We're honored to be joined by Tom Dyer. He is the director and cinematographer, and Amanda Dyer, director and producer of the documentary film, Unseen, How We're Failing Parent Caregivers and Why It Matters. So how are you two doing? Doing great, thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. So let's go ahead and dive into this documentary. And let's start with a little background, a little context. What led you to focus on this topic when you talk about unseen, how we're failing parent caregivers and why it matters? Why focus on this sort of topic? Yeah, uh, it's a good question because previously we had no connection to the caregiving community or the caregiving experience. We had no connection to, we don't have anyone in our family that, um, is disabled. Um, we just, we we both work in the creative fields and we wanted to do, we do a lot of client work normally. And so we wanted to do something that, uh, we just wanted to do on our own, something, a passion project that we could work on together. Um, and so we decided to, to pursue a documentary. We had no idea what that was going to be about. And we just decided to keep our ears open. And right around that time, Amanda saw a Facebook post of like a friend of an, a friend of an acquaintance, like it, it was not connected to us at all. And it was about, um, it was a comment about, um, what it takes to be a caregiver of, of someone with uh, a, a severe disability and, and what that's like, um, and why there should be a documentary on that. And, you know, obviously the word documentary caused her to perk up. And, um, it turns out that that person was Jess, who you eventually see in the film and she lived 20 minutes from us. So it was just kind of, a coincidence that we stumbled upon that um, at that time. And so we met up with Jess and Ryan and just started asking a lot of questions. Um, and our minds were kind of blown at a lot of the things that um, they go through as a family and, and what they, um, you know, what their life is like. It was something that was so new to us. And so our hope is that through this film, um, we are able to bring a, an, a, f a fresh perspective to these experiences from c coming from as, as outsiders. Right. Um, and so our hope is that people um, uh, who were like us, who had no knowledge of this are able to see this film and be um, uh, educated, but also convicted by um, a lot of the things that um, uh, are affecting these families. Amanda, as director, producer, give us your take on the storyline and how you describe the documentary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the film follows the Ronnie family, which they're a blended family. They have eight children, um, one of whom is Lucas, who has um, profound disabilities and requires total care. Um, and we followed the family for a couple years, um, about three years to, to put the film together, um, and just really explored a lot of different topics that were coming up in their life. Um, and kind of throughout, we wondered, you know, how common are these issues? What what are the, how big of a, a challenge is this for families across the country? And so we ended up also interviewing lots of other caregivers from different parts of the country, different walks of life, and getting their perspective as well. And we just saw these themes emerge, um, whether that's the challenges from financial health, physical health, mental health, concerns about what long-term care options are available. Um, regardless of the specifics of the scenarios, we just saw these same themes come up over and over and just the lack of solutions that are out there. Um, and so that's really what compelled us to make the film and bring those challenges to life to be able to show people, um, you know, like us, you may think a lot of these things are, you know, someone's taking care of this, right? That's, that's kind of where we were. Um, so it just, it surprised us so much that we felt really um, passionate about bringing the story to more people. So, you know, we can see like, this is a community issue. Um, if you're not a caregiver today, you might be one tomorrow. And so we should all think about what that means for us. Tom, as a cinematographer, in many cases, you go in and, and you collect all this footage and you're, you know, capturing all these special moments. And then you have to come back and compile them and put them all together and make a decision around what goes in and what doesn't. Give us an idea of some of the things that you were looking at in terms of the emotion, the storytelling aspect, kind of putting the pieces together to ultimately drive a story, but also drive emotion. Yeah, I mean, from the beginning, one of our um, 
uh, first conversations was, you know, tonally, what do we want to do with this? And going into it, we knew we wanted it to be very raw and very honest. Um, you know, I think stories like this, I mean, uh, films like this ten have a tendency to, um, end on a high note or maybe end on a, you know, an upswing to, to kind of leave you feeling good about things. And we were not into that just because it felt like a disservice to, um, what a lot of the families that we were, we talked, th talked with were going through. And so we knew we wanted it to be pretty, um, real and honest. And thankfully the Ronnie's were, um, uh, willing to let us in to this thing that happens behind closed doors and so we filmed a lot of, you know, moments with them that people don't see when they care for their families. And, um, and so, um, we definitely put this together in, um, walking through life with the Ronnie's for a bit of a bit of a, of time, you know, a lot of it wasn't necessarily planned out. We wanted to get a real glimpse at what they were going through. And so we made sure to capture those scenes of things that they do on a regular basis and just so, show what their everyday life is like. But obviously, we wanted to include, um, you know, uh, tonally some things that that could kind of stretch and tie things together. And that's where there's this metaphor uh, in the film of broken glass comes into play um, from something that came out of an interview with Jess and just how she describes the process. And so, um, you know, we wanted to find that balance of something that was tonally engaging and appropriate to 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 tie these scenes with the family together but also tie these other community interviews together but also we wanted to get out of the way of it a little bit right and just show these moments that they go through um and show how real and raw they can be and let them do the storytelling that's you know we mm -hmm. we definitely didn't want to get in the mix too much on that but tried to find the balance there for sure we wanted to be true to what they were telling us and be able to yeah. fairly and accurately represent their stories. And that honestly has been some of the best feedback we've gotten is parents saying like, this is so accurate. This is so true. I feel like I was watching my own life. Um, and I think that's been really rewarding to hear that from parents. The good news is you jumped right in and answered the question, which is oh, the, the feedback. It's <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, no, the, the feedback's been great. I mean, um, one thing that I, I'll say is I, at first we didn't think that caregivers would want to watch this right because this is their this is what they go through every day and so um it's been a little bit of a surprise a pleasant one to hear good feedback from them um just in that you know i think they are feeling recognized and like uh people are paying attention which is which is great i mean that's mm -hmm. that's our whole goal um uh, but it was it, it was very refreshing to know that they were on board with that cuz again we're coming coming to this front as outsiders, like we wanted to get it right and we wanted to do them justice. And um, so it's, that's been a nice thing to, to see. And I think it also normalizes when you talk about mental health and destigmatizing mm -hmm. some of those things, being able to see others. Oh, wait a second. Cause in many cases you're isolated, you're going through it, what feels like alone. And then you start mm -hmm. looking, it's like, Oh, wait a second. Look at all these others who are sharing, you know, similar challenges and opportunities and how they're going about it. And, oh, wait a second, I'm not alone. I think there's yeah. a piece mm -hmm. of that where seeing yourself in the shoes of someone else um, can be, you know, very therapeutic and and say, okay, you know, not only raising awareness, but also to raising awareness that there are others, you know, like me going through this similar process. So a big part of, for both of you is, nonprofit storytelling, activation, getting people involved. So talk about kind of that next step of what really are the major goals outside of raising awareness, getting people help and opening doors to resources and pushing on these opportunities. What are some of the major goals to activate in the community? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we really thought through what our impact and outreach strategy was and how, you know, how we wanted to get the film out there and use it as a tool or a catalyst for change, at least, you know, open up these conversations. Um, so right now we're, we're partnering with a lot of, a lot of different organizations, nonprofits, children's hospitals, advocacy groups, uh, universities who are hosting screening events where they can pull their community together, have these conversations about, Hey, what, you know, what are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? What solutions are we actually do we want to work together toward? Because um, I think if we learned anything throughout this, it's that unfortunately there's no 
you know, magic bullet solution that's going to solve the challenges for everyone. Every family is different. Every family wants different things. And really, we just we need more options and more choices and, and more accessibility to things that are out there for families. Um, so for that reason, we didn't propose any like, you know, one single solution. It's more about using the, the organizations can use the film as a tool to have that discussion, bring their community together, um, start by educating, asking these hard questions and really wrestling with it and saying, you know, what are we going to do? What, what do we want to work toward? November is National Family Caregiver Month, and so you've got some special opportunities tied to that. Go ahead and dive in on that front. Yeah, we're really excited about that. I think it's the perfect opportunity to um, do a large screening event for um, people all across the country. So we're going to have, it's a, a global online screening. Anyone can come on, uh, go to our website, watch the film. Um, there'll also be some bonus content like panel discussions and things that we're going to have. Um, and it's a great opportunity to, if you are a caregiver and want to watch, you're 100% welcome. If you are a caregiver and know somebody who might need to see this message, maybe it's a healthcare provider you work with, a family member, a friend, someone who you feel like just really hasn't, doesn't understand what you may be going through. This is a great opportunity to invite them to come as well and share that message so that maybe it can help you start those conversations in your own circle. And I know that year round for different nonprofits and organizations, like you said, this is a great opportunity to open the door to have these sort of conversations, talk about how they can take advantage and host their own screenings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much everything is on our website. It's caregiverdocdoc.com. If you go there, we've got more information about this screening in, in November and also information about hosting your own screening as well. So if you start there, you can pretty much access everything. We also have a caregiver uh, toolbox that has some different resources, discussion guides, uh, nonprofits you might be interested in. So there's everything's there if you go to caregiverdoc.com. What's something that each of you has learned going through this process? And obviously we've covered a lot of ground already, but when you talk about kind of diving in and not necessarily knowing a whole lot about the subject outside of seeing the post and starting to kind of dive in, but then all of a sudden, you know, changing your perspective and your world completely, what, what's one or two things that you've learned along the way of this? Yeah, I think, um, you know, when we started this, it started as a research project because we knew nothing. Uh, and so we just, uh, like I said, we asked a lot of questions and we um, solicited a lot of um, advice and input from the caregiving community. Um, and uh, what we did is we uh, we sent these this questionnaire out and asked people to respond with video message which is what you end up seeing in the film. Um, and when those started coming in, um, the responses that we got um, were so surprising to me in how similar they were. I mean, these people were not um, talking to each other and they have their own unique experiences that they're going through, but the responses they were giving us to these questions that we were asking were, were almost identical in some cases, just about some of the things that they go through um, on a daily basis and really started to see this community develop in, in their, in, in their struggle. Uh, and, um, and so that was very, um, eye opening, uh, to, to me. Um, and as we kind of met a lot, met a lot of these people and, and dove into this, just like the community started to take shape in, in front of us. And, um, uh, I don't know, it was just, it was always so surprising just to, uh, learn how similar, the uh the responses were so so surprising to me. Yeah, and I think I've been inspired by finding out that it really doesn't little things can make a difference. Like if you're mm -hmm. wanting to show more compassion or care to caregivers, there's really approachable ways to do that. Um, you know, if you're an individual, it it's being a friend, it's inviting someone over, it's dropping by with some groceries, it's simple things. It you know maybe if you're a business, it could be adding an adult size changing table that can accommodate families better or adding a work from home policy for your employees. Um, there's some really approachable things that everybody can do regardless of, you know, what your realm of influence is. Um, so I think that's been cool to see just by getting to know more families that yes, we need some bigger sweeping changes that are going to, you know, challenging to do. Um, but if you're looking to make a difference today, there, there definitely are things. And, and we try to present some of those options through the film. Well, and hopefully, just like you're saying, the documentary does open the eyes, but it also, too, like you're saying, it brings people together. And I think that's a, 
a really neat kind of storyline of the documentary is that in many cases, this is going to bring a lot of families together who are going through similar struggles and opportunities. And so you become this very cool convening ground to bring people together who normally maybe otherwise would have never met or connected. So I think that's a, a neat storyline in and of itself. You've mentioned before the website, go ahead and mention again. So mention again, the website, the dates for the screening, and obviously where we can go to connect in and uh, get involved. Yeah, so we're celebrating National Family Caregivers Month with the screening in November. It'll be online November 18th through 30th. Um, you can access that if you go to our website, caregiverdoc.com. And you can also get more information about being involved, hosting a screening, or connecting with us there. Well, Tom, Amanda, congratulations, and uh, best of luck for the future ahead with it as well. Thank you so much for all you're doing for coming on the show. Thanks so much for having us. us.